on the back end of the video that I did not that long ago about did I think that I was spending too much money on food and bearing in mind how I shop and that I do have a small food budget. But despite having a small food budget, I seem to have plenty to eat. Um, and there's all sorts of reasons for how I managed to accumulate so much food on so little money. But I thought I would do this um, little challenge and show you what I eat on an average week. Now, I will start this off by saying that I do intermittent fasting. So my eating window is 12 till 5 and I don't eat outside those hours. And one of the reasons that I do this is that I suppose I would definitely call myself some sort of foodie. I like to eat. I am a grazer. If food had no calories, I would eat all day, every day. I like food. It's my little addiction that I like. Some people smoke, some people drink. I like to eat. And it's something that I have to keep under control. I have fought with my love of food my entire life since I was a child. And I don't want my health to suffer as a result. I also lead quite a sedentary life. I live on my own. I work from home. My kitchen is in the next room to where I work. It's difficult for me to resist temptation. So uh, currently I am back up to the heaviest weight I've ever been and I am so angry at myself for that because all I need to do is stop eating so much and go and walk about a bit more. And I'm just so lazy, it's just dreadful. So I'm trying different tactics this year. I'm trying to eat less processed stuff. I'm trying to buy less cake and stuff like that. I haven't been terribly successful so far. But one of the things that I've also done is instead of... So I don't do breakfast. I have my morning coffee and I'll drink a few cups of tea during the day and I mostly drink water. I don't drink and eat a lot of junk stuff. I don't have takeaways, I don't go out to restaurants, I don't go to the pub, all that sort of thing. Um, so what I tend to do is lunch is my main meal because I'm liable to get that energy slump mid-afternoon and afternoon is when I start to snack. So what I've, what I've been doing for a long time now is making my main meal at lunchtime. But then because the eating for me is a behaviour rather than a need. I'm not hungry. I know I'm not hungry. It's a behaviour. It's a thing I do, like making a cup of tea or whatever. So what I've had to do, because I will make lunch, eat lunch, and then I will start grazing in the afternoon until tea time. So what I'm now doing is I'm making lunch. I'm making um, a little bit more lunch, but not a lot. And my lunches are generally healthy. I generally do one pan meals and it's um, usually it will be some kind of meat, it might be canned fish, it might be a processed meat, it might be a fresh meat, depends on what I can get in the supermarket. And I'll load it up with vegetables. So you'll have your, your potatoes and your carrots and your onion and your broccoli and all those things, whatever I can get on the yellow sticker and those make up my meals. So what I'm doing, I'm making a slightly larger lunch. I'm dividing that lunch up into say three meals, three smaller sections. And I'm eating it gradually through the afternoon so that all I am eating is the healthy meals and I'm not reaching for the snacks. And then sometimes they'll be more over towards the end of the day, particularly if I've had a busy, busy day and I've been out in the afternoon, for instance. And whatever's left in the pan at the end of the day then becomes my tea and I'll reheat it up properly for tea. If it's a little bit short, I might add an extra little bit of veg to it just to boost it up again to make it enough for tea and then I also I, I'm a mixture of savoury and sweet so after I've had my savoury lunch I like something a bit sweet afterwards and it can be something really simple like a square of chocolate it doesn't have to be much but it's like that end to the meal <clears throat> it's like that end to the meal thing that I need to do so sometimes like this week um, I made a cake at the weekend I used uh, the last of the jar of mince meat that I used to make mince pies with the other week and I made it into a cake. It made a really nice cake and that cake can, will last me a week because I'll just nibble on it. 
after each meal uh, like after lunch after dinner and maybe I might sneak a little bit during the day so the food that I'm showing you is kind of an average week so I will start with my coffee in the morning when I get up I will try and hold off having anything until lunchtime um, sometimes that gets broken at about half eleven um, but it'll be something daft like I'm a sucker for peanut butter, so a teaspoon of peanut butter will just keep me going until lunchtime. That's that's my idea of a snack. It'll be something as silly as that. So I might have like a teaspoon of um, of peanut butter about half an hour before I start making preparing lunch, and then in the afternoon, if I've got if I have got some bread or something out like a bit of bagel, I might spread a little bit of peanut butter on that. But it'll be like a bite-sized bit. It's not like when I snack, I have to open an entire packet of biscuits or eat an entire cake. It'll be a little something, just a little something, just to nibble on. And then in the evening, I'll have whatever dinner it is, whether that's um, lunch again. Um, I don't have to have an enormous variety of food. I'm quite in a set routine of how I cook and what I cook, and I don't get bored of that. But I just need to have enough of it. To... It means that I am still grazing. The problem is that if I fixate on not snacking, it makes me snack more. If that is the way I am, I would rather just accept that and adapt the things that I'm snacking rather than forcing myself to, right, I've had lunch, now I can't have anything until four or five o'clock. Because I will just fixate and it'll make things worse and then I'll just crack and then I'll just stuff myself stupid. So this is how I am trying to work on that and, and, and get a balance and try and be better. Ideally, I need to lose about two stone. It's not going to happen. I'm also of that age where I'm finding it harder to get the weight off. Um, you know, blame the hormones, but my God, they've really taken their toll this last year or so. This winter, for some reason, although it was milder, I found particularly hard. I had massive sugar cravings going through winter. Probably a combination of the weather, combination of the hormones, the whole lot. I need to keep my weight down. I don't want to be overweight. Um... It makes me feel sluggish, I feel uncomfortable, I feel unhappy. I don't want to be stick thin, I just want to be a manageable weight. And I don't want to obsess about dieting. I've done that before. I've obsessed about weight and calorie counting and step counters. I've done it all and it leads to ruin. It doesn't work. I don't enjoy exercise for exercise sake. If I was out and about every day for a job, I wouldn't think anything of it. But just going out to exercise doesn't work for me. It's why I try to try to divide up all my errands during the week into lots of little trips to get me out and get me moving. But um, I hate exercise. I have also been an exercise addict. I've done that. Um, exercised myself into the ground, did injuries, all sorts. Um, don't want to do it again. Thank you. Uh, I love walking, I love hiking, I love exploring. Not a lot of it happens at the moment, and I think that I did a video the other uh, the other week about when I am I going to stop being afraid to spend money. I'm not sure when that's coming out. I think I think that's probably just come out, but I recorded it before this one. And I think that if, if I was going to think about spending more money on myself again, it would be going out on day trips and going out into the country and hiking and having, you know, doing more car camping trips, going out and exploring, do, doing more genealogy, more family research, uh, more history, that sort of thing. And I would go out in the car and then I'd walk around and do those things. So I think that's, um, that's also potentially a way to go. Things that get better when the weather changes. Now it's getting warmer. I've got the windows open. I'm doing more garden stuff. I like to be out more because the weather's changed. Um, and, you know, the improved weather and the light makes me more active. I really go into semi-hibernation. But anyway, so... I've just taken photographs, really, of... All the meals and the things that I've eaten during the course of an average week. 
I don't see any point in recording the details of every single meal. A picture will do and I'll divide it up by days and you can see what eat, I eat over the course of a week. It probably doesn't look like a lot to most people. Um, but the fact of the matter is that most of us eat too much. What can I say? We eat too much. We eat too much of the wrong things and we don't look after our health. So I know that the food I am eating at the moment is keeping me overweight. And that's partly because of the stacking behaviour. Um, and I do, you know, sometimes crack and have a bag of crisps or a bar of chocolate and things like that. I do all that stuff. I'm not a clean eater by any stretch of the imagination. There is too much processed food in my diet. Because any processed food in your diet is probably bad for you. But I also don't do a lot of exercise because I work from home. I have a standing desk, so I stand all day, but I'm not really moving around that much and not as much as I should be. So I'm just going to do pictures of the days. This is what I've had on those days, and I'll do a little talk through with it, and then you can get an idea of an average week. And this will be averaged based on what I could get in the shops. If I couldn't get anything in the shops, I'll go back into the stores that I have for the things that I've rolled over, and make meals from those things um, but I'm not going to detail where every single item came from you just have to look at the pictures and get a rough idea of what it is that I'm eating over the course of an average week hope that's interesting um, if you know that your weight is too high and maybe you haven't accepted that you just eat too much um, maybe this will be an interesting comparison for you I think it's always interesting to be able to compare your lifestyle to other people's to understand where you're going wrong. So I know I'm going wrong in all sorts of ways and I have to sort my sort myself out. I don't want to get to an age where I've put on even more weight and I'm then stuck with it. Um, and I can't shift it because I'm older and then it really starts to affect my health and my mobility. I don't want to be an old person who's overweight and can't get out of a chair. And I know people like this. I want to be like my parents who are, you know, almost 80 and still are slim. They put me to shame and are still mobile despite having a few health issues. Those few health issues have been reduced because they are fit and healthy otherwise and they can get around and they're not carrying extra weight and it's not affecting all sorts of aspects of their life and of course if you have overriding medical reasons and mental health reasons why your weight is what it is ignore what I'm saying I am not a professional telling you that you should be berating yourself for that I'm talking about people who have the ability to make changes to their life and are just too lazy like me to do it. And I'm just not acknowledging the fact that you, you do need to look after yourself. So slightly off tangent as usual, but it, these are all important factors for when you see what I eat in a week, understanding why, the whys and wherefores of what I do. So in terms of drinks, I haven't really included drinks here. Coffee in the morning, a few cups of tea during the day. I try to drink, drink at least two litres of water a day. Sometimes I fail, sometimes it's a litre, sometimes it's three. It depends on what I'm doing. I always take my bottle out with me wherever I'm going. Uh, if I'm going out on an errand, and I always drink that bottle while I'm out or on the way back from that errand, so that that's got me into a really good habit of when I am out, I always drink a litre of water. So that's been a, a, a positive change that I've made that is easy to do. And I just need to do the same thing with food now, but in the opposite direction. I need less of it, not more. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, do comment, do um, say things, I guess, uh, if this affects you, if this gives you, gives you ideas, if you're worried about certain things, um, anything, just comment. It's nice to hear what people have to say about the various bits and pieces that I post. This is my life. What can I say? This is what I do. Enjoy. What's left is right.
chasing stars and holding you I can't see the end, but we'll see it through about photographing everything you eat for the week. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if it looks better than I thought it would, or it looks worse. There are certainly a lot of what, what you would call beige foods there, so a lot of processed stuff, and a lot of that is based around what I can get cheaply in the shops. I can't afford, you know, bags of nuts, tons of fresh fruit, um, all that sort of thing. And I am having to wean myself off the things that retailers try to get you addicted to. So it's the carbohydrates, it's the processed bread, it's the sugar. They know how to keep you hooked because it gives your brain that buzz and particularly I would like to get the need for sugar out of my brain. I think that would be a particularly good deciding factor. Now in terms of quantities I realise that those pictures didn't accurately demonstrate the size of each portion of things. So where I showed you a lunch and then you saw the same picture repeated in the afternoon and then at dinner. I wasn't eating an entire massive bowl in one go. That was representative of of the, the meal that I had created. But it would be that divided by three kind of thing. So 
you won't be looking at say like mid-afternoon if I'd had the lunch a bit of the lunch mid-afternoon as a snack it might be three or four spoonfuls because like I said when I snack it's not that I, it's not the quantity it's about the thing so a teaspoon of peanut butter is a teaspoon of peanut butter and if I have a bit of what's left from lunch in mid-afternoon it'll be you know an amount of food you could fit in half the palm of your hand sort of thing so it's food for thought though quite literally um yeah not sure how i feel it's it's certainly in the same way that when i used to calorie count i was really shocked about how many calories i actually consumed in a day because it was far too many and I think that's probably part of the problem I have now. I'm eating more calories than I burn, obviously, and I'm not burning off enough calories, obviously. I know why my weight is what it is. Uh, it's just getting into the mental state of being able to do something about it. So here I am going down the same road I've been down before, which is just focusing on the improvements I can make that make it easy for me to do it so to speak so that I don't switch off get bored and then give up and I've spoken before about how if you do things incrementally and gradually and add small aspects to your life on a regular basis it becomes manageable and easy to do and it's exactly the same with budgeting as it is with dealing with eating so that's where I am now that's that's the battle that I face for my own psychology as we roll into what is turning out to be a really beautiful sp uh, spring, beautiful May and I, I certainly feel that I eat less once the weather changes. I think a lot of it is linked to daylight hours and sunshine and warmth. Um, I definitely eat more when the daylight hours are short and that's when you crave the sugar. I definitely eat more when I'm cold when I'm feeling uncomfortable, see now I can get the layers off, I'm not like wearing four jumpers and two pairs of socks around the flat all day because it's so cold and I feel it gives me an energy that doesn't need to be filled by eating. So yeah that's it, um, gosh there was such a loss in that but I bet loads of you are sitting there going yeah I know, yes, yes, maybe if you've already overcome this, I'd love to hear your tips. And I hope you're being nice to yourselves, I really do. Look how warm my cheeks are. It's because it's so much sun coming into the window. This glorious look. Spring sunshine. Doesn't it make you happy? So, hope you enjoyed that. Um, bye!